the materialist theories of the mind are not able to account for lots of different phenomena. It's time to move on in the academic world for scientists. <laughs> mind uh, cannot be reduced uh, strictly to physical or material processes in the brain. So that uh, mind is, uh, can be independent of the brain in certain conditions, uh, as illustrated, for instance, by near-death experience that happened during cardiac arrest. Whenever there's a cardiac arrest, the blood flow to the brain will cease very rapidly. And if you measure the electrical activity of the brain with uh, an electroencephalogram or EEG, the, uh, the, the electrical activity disappears within 10 to 20 seconds. And yet, in that kind of state, um, there have been over five studies during the last 15 years reporting above 100 cases of people, of experiencers, uh, people who were able to uh, be conscious, to perceive, to have memories, and so on and so forth, while they were in a state of clinical death. So this um, line of evidence in particular shows that what we call mind, uh, is the m mental functions, including consciousness, they can be independent of uh, brain activity. <laughs> Right now, I'm uh, more involved in the development of um, a theory, a general theory about uh, mind and consciousness. I'm also involved in um, the development of a, a paradigm that I call post-materialist. And so um, I was the, uh, the researcher who uh, took the lead of a project that we call the uh, Manifesto for Post-Materialist Science. And I'm also uh, involved in uh, research with regard to uh, spirituality and unconditional love. So uh, with colleagues at Harvard University and also at the University of Arizona, we are developing the first scientific study to measure uh, what we call universal love. This kind of debate is very important for the scientific community because for the last few hundred years, the materialist view of uh, the mind, that is, brain produce mind and consciousness, well, this, this view has been dominant, and, uh, but for, and it doesn't work because the materialist theories of the mind are not able to account for lots of different phenomena, and they cannot account, explain uh, in a satisfactory uh, fashion, the relationship between mind and brain. So, it, it's um, so it's very important because it tells us that it's time to move on in the academic world for scientists, and um, also it's important to reach the general population about that because if they realize that they are not biological robots totally determined by their neurons or their genes, but that their mind is uh, quite powerful or can be very powerful. It has um, daily applications, you know, in their life. So it's also very important for uh, regular people.